Do you ever sit, look at your website and know all of the things you would want to change, but alas, there it still sits because you don't have the time to do it? Then you are going to love today's episode. I sit down with Lindy, who is the owner of Up in a Day. She's going to talk to us about how she saw a lack in the world with websites and filled it, some of the struggles she's faced along the way in her business, how she uses networking to gain clients, finding her key demographic, and how you are overcoming complicating your website and some things to think about. So if you have a website like mine that you're like, meh, it's not my favorite, then this episode is for you. I'm Tanya Fox, and you're listening to Fox Talks Business Podcast. I started my career in the corporate world, but always played to my own tune and love to think outside of the box. This didn't always serve me well with the bosses, so I made the decision to become an entrepreneur. And that little seed of entrepreneurial curiosity continued to grow as I branched out into retail, service, and franchise businesses. Now, I have been fortunate to have amazing successes in the last two decades, but they did not come without some really big failures and even bigger lessons learned. And that's why I started this podcast, not just to share the failures, but to show you how you can turn every failure into a success. We're going to hear from some amazing humans from around the world that are going to share their stories of the good, the bad, and the motivational entrepreneurial life has to offer. After all, life is too short to make all of the mistakes yourself. So why not learn from each other? And of course, we're going to have some fun. Because as I always say, well, you know what? I'll tell you that at the end of the episode. Hey, Foxy listeners. Thanks so much for tuning in today. What I love most about doing this podcast is the stuff that you never get to hear. That happens before recordings because I have really good conversations with my guests that you guys will never be able to hear. So um, (laughs) sorry about that, but it was really, really good. And I'm so excited to have Lindy on the show today. Lindy, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. So I spoiled them a little bit because I was like, oh, there's really great stuff, but don't worry guys. I'm going to let you in on some of the stuff because I was chatting with you about sort of your story, like how you got into business, some of the struggles you had share with the listeners, some of the stuff that I got to hear already. Sure. Sure. Um, so I spent, I'm sure a lot of your listeners might be in the same boat. I spent about 15 plus dating myself years in corporate, uh, working in New York City. I was a creative director at a lot of large brands. And I had the opportunity about five years ago to say, you know what, I'm good. I'm going to move to Miami. And the opportunity arose. I took it. And when I arrived here, I started a small boutique digital marketing uh, agency, um, just taking on little clients here and there. And then the clients started getting really big. We took on a a lot of larger clients. We had like Getty Images. We had a large, uh, some large clients here in Miami and we were doing really well. And what was happening is uh, we were getting referrals to us of, of a lot of small business owners who were coming to us saying, I have this website. It was built for me a year ago, six months ago, two weeks ago, and I'm very unhappy with it. I'm not on Google. The design isn't what I expected. The messaging and the copy doesn't represent what I offer. And frankly, people are just not coming to my website. I'm just not proud of it. It's not working. Can you redesign this website? Can you build me a new website? And at the time, uh, we just did not have that fun- functionality. We, we, we were building really intricate Shopify sites and really big Squarespace sites. And so I had to turn them away. And we kept on getting more and more of these referrals coming to us. And I said, wow, you know, there is there are so many hundreds of people, thousands of people out there who have small businesses or they're entrepreneurs, they're starting something new. And they don't know where to turn to get a website done quickly with little effort from them and on their budget. Plus what happens after the website is built and who's going to make edits quickly, right? Because we're all busy business owners. We need the edits done fast. We need the website up and running because we have so many other things to do to to grow our business, to start our business. So uh, wheels were turning. I had always dreamt of having a a productized service to create something new. And really it developed into really wanting to help these people. So that's how Up in a Day was born. 
I said, wow, we're really great expert Squarespace website designers. Uh, we can build really fast. And so I created a processes that allows us not only to bring on these new clients quickly and to understand what they need, but also for the designers to design these high impact, ready to go SEO optimized websites that, that these business owners deserve. Because I think a lot of people, when they think of that, they think of like, it's all of their information is just being put into a template and it's going to look <laughs> like everyone else's website. That's there. Totally. Sometimes when I'm like Squarespace, they're like, is it going to be in a template? <laughs> I have to say no. So we start, uh, luckily uh, for everybody, we start with a blank template. Squarespace templates are great for people who are just like need, like, or who are kind of privy to maybe website design and just need, you know want to DIY it and that's fine. But what we offer is so much more. We actually offer websites that last generally almost a lifetime, right? They, they, we take a very um, specific marketing approach to the layout and the flow and the user experience to all of our websites. And they're all custom branded to the clients. So the way it works is you and I would have a kickoff call, let's say, Tanya, you are like, I want a new website. I have a really bad website or I have a new business and I need a new website. And then we would talk Which about- Which we talked about that before. Because yeah, <laughs> anytime, about that before. anytime anybody asks me, they're like, do you like your website? And I'm like, no. <laughs> so I'm I using it as an example. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think, I think I want to be honest about that because I think like some people, you know, don't want to it don't want to admit that right because they're like I put a lot of time in it but mine was like I I was in that boat I wanted something to go up quick I was starting this podcast everybody says you need to have a website I threw it up there but now that I'm in it a little bit I'm like yeah, I could tell you everything I don't like about every single page like I wish this was different or I wish that was different but do you think I'm gonna go in and change it no do you know no. why because I don't know how <laughs> That's right. I tried it and I moved the picture and it just flies back. And I'm like, all right, screw you. We'll do this another day. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> no, it, it makes sense. That's exactly the, the problem that we solve for so many people. They come to us and they, they, for that, you know, with that same issue. And, you know, typically what happens is even if they have a WordPress site, they don't have to have a Squarespace site. They can have a, a GoDaddy website. We will redesign a brand new site for them. And then just take down their existing site and then just transfer the domain over. So now they have this brand new site and they can just leave it. And we have a subscription service that allows that people can sign up to on a monthly basis um, or maybe even a la carte, depending on their needs. And the cool thing about that is when they send us the edits that they need done, they're done within 24 hours. And like, that is like mm. unheard of. That never happens. And that is like the, the one, uh, you know, the one solution I wanted to offer, you know, not just the website, but what happens after you build the website, we send them off with a video sh tutorial saying, this is how showing them how to move around the back end of the Squarespace, how to make updates, like very thoroughly. And some business owners love that, but other business owners don't have the time. And frankly, they just don't want to, I would be in that boat. Like, I don't want to make updates. Like I just want to send it to up in a day and have them do it and not have to worry about it. So that's another um, service that we offer that people love. Well, and I think that one is, you know, it's a good one because I think there's are some times, like even for myself, there's a lot of times where I like to just go in and kind of putz around and change a few things or play with the wording. But then there's those times where I'm like, I can't move this stupid photo. And then you're just yeah. like, and so there it stays. Yeah. If you're <laughs> hot inside, you're like, this is not worth it. Yeah. <laughs> who does well usually it's me walking upstairs going who wants to do this for a living <laughs> I don't do understand. and then and then I always write it down like I, I don't know how many to-do lists that's been on like you need to like fix this website thing but I think people get stuck on that because you know we were talking beforehand that it just seems like one it seems like a daunting task but two a lot of people are like you know especially when they're you know, just starting out or they, it's a little bit of a static website. There isn't a ton of stuff that changes on it. And we were talking about, you know, a lot of our listeners have said like, I just don't have tens of thousands of dollars, you know, 10, $15,000 to revamp this website that really is just there. Cause sometimes people go off on my social media and want to check stuff out. Oh, so glad you brought that up. Actually, that is 
the one that is like the primary reason I started up in a day to, um, in terms of helping people is because getting a great website should not cost tens or tens of thousands of dollars, unless maybe your company needs that. Maybe your company needs a lot of technical integrations, or it needs to be very intricate. Maybe the website is, is what is, you know, producing, you know, the income for your business. For example, uh, maybe you're having, maybe you have a publishing site um, and you have a really intricate blog or you have a news site. Maybe you um, are selling a SaaS product, something like that, that really involves like true like WordPress backend, like custom. But for almost all business owners, small business owners, restaurants, CPAs, mortgage brokers, coaches, um, podcasters, you guys don't need complicated websites. You really don't. And I, it was frustrating when I was, it was frustrating for me before I started up in a day. And I was talking to all these small business owners who had spent $8,000, $10,000 on a very simple website that just wasn't working for them. And that's when I saw the gap in the market. I'm like, wow, there is a hole here. You know, not to be like so cliche, but like kind of a disruptor to being like, Hey, everybody, guess what? We're coming in and we are going to help you. And it doesn't have to be complicated. This is not too, too good to be true to get a website up in a day. Like we have a processes that allows us to do this for you. So we pride ourselves on quality, obviously, um, as well as amazing customer service. So like, we're always there for our clients. We're super communicative, obviously, because we're doing this fast, you know? Um, and then in terms of like support afterwards, we're like always there for them. So people love it. I mean, they absolutely love it. When we talk to people who have already <laughs> built their website with somebody else, they're like, oh my gosh, where were you two months ago when I needed you? <laughs> I'm like, well, we're trying, we're, here. we're trying to get there. <laughs> we're here, but maybe we're too hidden still. So, uh, so it's all about, you know, we, I do a lot of networking. That seems to be uh, the basis of getting the, you know, the great referrals that come to us. Referrals are everything, as we all know. Uh, also partnering with other digital marketing agencies has been really great for our business as well. So let's talk a little bit about that. Cause I think this can also transfer to people who are like, look, I, I mean, I want to do this thing, but I need to generate some more income. And we hear all of the time about networking. So people will go to like tons of events, but we hear it all the time, right? Like I attended all of these events. I talked to people. Great. <laughs> did did yeah. nothing. Now what? <laughs> you know, exactly. Yeah. Well, one thing about, I had to learn the long way, maybe the hard way, because for up in a day, we are very transactional. Not every one of our clients stays with us for the support plan. A majority of them leave. So they purchase, we, we build, we make, and we send them on their way. So in that sense, it's very transactional. And unfortunately, the support plan does, will not support our staff. I'm going right. Uh, so, so with that being said, I had to really think about outside the box prior to up in a day, I was very insular. I was very quiet. You know, I grew up as a graphic designer, so I had did my own thing, was in corporate, you know, kind of always being told what to do. And when you go off on your own and you are an entrepreneur, the number one thing that you have to do is talk about yourself, talk about your business, talk to everybody about what, what do they have going on? Tell them about what you have going on because you have to put that in everyone's ear and it sparks interest and it sparks conversation. And before you know it, they're talking to other people, you know, depending on how maybe interesting or niche you of a product uh, or service that you offer. Um, it's really, that was like one of the biggest lessons I learned. And then in terms of networking, um, like I said, partnering with, you know, as a service, you can't really show what you do. So partnering with other agencies that can send, you know, we refer, you know, clients that aren't right for us each other's way. Um, a lot of uh, entrepreneur tech or sorry, entrepreneur, like meetups, thing, things like that, being on podcasts, that's great. Um, yeah, a lot of social media, obviously. So I, I will say that Instagram, 
I haven't found that Instagram is where our clientele is yet. Uh, we've tried a lot of different types of marketing strategies on Instagram, non-paid, all organic. And although we get traction, I would say that LinkedIn has been our best because we're obviously, even though we're like B2C, we, we go for the B2B companies and that seems to work really well for us. Yeah. And I would agree with you. I think that sometimes we get stuck, you know, entrepreneurs get stuck because they hear like, this is the place to be. Um, Instagram is one of those beasts for me because I'm like, I don't take photos. <laughs> like it's a, like when all of the, when I go out with like girlfriends or whatever, and everybody's like, stop, stop, stop. Like I'm like half done my plate. And I'm like, oh, well, this was really good. And they were like, you could have taken a photo of that. I'm like, who gives a shit what I'm eating? I'm the same way. Like, <gasps> it just stories, make any sense reels. Yeah. Oh my gosh. My, I don't know if you have come across this, but w advice I got, and I guess it works. I don't know. I don't like putting myself in front of the brand, even though it's really important. So people don't think we're like coming from, you know, somewhere, you know, in who knows where, um, that we are a U.S. based company, that we are a woman owned company, which I think is really cool. I didn't really think much of it at the time, but they're like, you have to put your face in front of all of your posts and you have to do reels and, you know, show your face on Instagram. So people know it's like a real thing. And they like, you know, they have something to relate to. And I was like, I don't want to do that. And so, <laughs> but it, it actually works. <laughs> it does. It like people. the stories for me are okay because I can just go on and, you know, and I get in kicks where uh, you'll see lots of stories because I, you know, I'll just think of st stuff and I'll just throw it out there. Um, but it's funny to me how sometimes I'm like, I'm getting a little like off base and those are the ones that hit with people. And I'm like, okay, these, these are so weird. The reels, um, I have a lot of people that would be like, oh, it would be so like, oh, you would be so funny. And I'm like, but the reels that I see that I think that would be really fun to do are not appropriate, <laughs> <laughs> are not professional. Like, like, and they're like, no, it's okay. And I'm like, no, no, <laughs> like, it's one of those <laughs> things that there's a reason I don't share some stuff. Like I literally save it. And then my husband and I will sit on the couch and I'm like, what did you see today? <laughs> that was like funny, but you know, I won't share it. Cause I'm like, you know, got to be professional. And sometimes my sense of humor behind closed doors can be a little jaded, <laughs> <laughs> a little dark, I guess, or whatever, but I'm like, that's not appropriate for you me to post another... out. <laughs> I, I think you should do another avatar, like Instagram account where you do all of this stuff that's inappropriate because I feel like you're, you, it would be hilarious. <laughs> well, and it was so funny because we were out, we just went on holidays. So we were out and we, there was like a group of people that had gotten together. It was like a backyard barbecue kind of thing. And my husband and I were having like, we, it wasn't an argument, but we were just kind of like kibitzing back and forth. But I, he was just saying something that I thought was really stupid. And I said that to him. And so everyone else is like, can you please, when you go home, do us a favor and just put cameras in your house so that we can <laughs> listen in on some of the conversation? Because we didn't realize that as we were sort of having this conversation back and forth with each other. And I'm like, what you're saying doesn't make any sense. And he's like, maybe you're just not listening properly. I'm like, or maybe you're just stupid. Like, so we're, <laughs> we're not paying attention to anybody around us. In the end, we realized that everybody stopped and they were like, oh, it was like watching a comedy show. Like the two I of you it. just going at each other. And I was like, oh my God. So I've said like, we probably should do, but to, I'm like, well, really? Like people would find this amusing. But then I'm like, hey, I mean, I watch other people making reels all day. So you know, but it sounds like you're planting the seed. Maybe there's a show coming into your future. Another maybe, but project. there's, there's also that other part of me that's like, Oh, I don't want the pressure though. <laughs> it just has to come naturally. True. That is and I'm true. like, I don't think I could do reality TV. Cause there are some times where I, I don't realize how, um, uninhibited my mouth can be <laughs> until <laughs> somebody else is in the house and then they're like oh uh, you guys talk like this to each other all the time like and I'm like oh yeah I realize how weird it is for other people you know when you step other people step in and you know hear our sense of humor and then they're like oh my god 
<laughs> the reality might be a too the reality might be a bit too much for some people. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe that's my ticket though. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah, something to think about for sure. But okay, let's get back to to you. So within doing all of this, what do you, like, what have you found for like with your clients? I mean, we talked a little bit about, you know, that they, you know, have this website created and then they, they, they're unhappy with it. What do you find is the one thing that most people are looking for in their website? Cause I think a lot of people go, everybody tells you how that you need to have a website, but I don't know what to put up on there. Mm. I think that's a great question. Um, somebody will come to us. The, the, usually the number one question is, I don't understand why I'm not found on Google. That's a very complicated question. But then we look at their website and we're like, well, your website has a lot of errors on it. And it's very outdated. So therefore Google and other search engines are, are marking this as old outdated and they're going to drop you through the list. Plus you don't have any traffic to your website. So that is another reason. But... For us, we'd, I'd say that people generally come to us saying outside of the Google thing, that's like one. Second is the design. They're embarrassed by the design and they're upset because they spent all this money on a designer who promised them, you know, X and they got Y and they're like, well, I guess I'm just going to pay for it. You know, it, it, it's, it's really the responsibility of the web designers and graphic artists, anyone who's providing a service to make, to make sure that it's a good fit for the client, for them, that they are very communicative on what they, you know, what they're, what they're delivering, um, expectations. And that's something that we are very, you know, communicative about because for up in a day, I have to make sure that every new, actually every client that comes to us, it's a good fit for them because we have a set, you know, there's expectations and we have a process and there's a scope up to five pages. Um, and we want to make sure that you are getting exactly what you need. So you know, coming to us, you're always going to get an awesome design, no matter what, because we're all really great graphic designers and that can translate we translate that into web design through squarespace but uh the other thing is that we are marketers as well so we offer a lot of now i'm going off on a tangent sorry no that's okay um, we offer um, copywriting services so my background is in marketing messaging branding which is very helpful for us as up in a day for our quality of product uh, because Oh, go, again, going back to your, your original question, they think it's a design, but it's not just a design. It's actually the messaging of their website and the user experience. I like to explain it this way with all new clients coming our way who are asking for us to audit their website, which we offer as a free service, uh, which is brand new, um, is that they, they will you know, see their website as like this kind of like messy design. But when we go in, we... Uh, have a copywriter with us that will help to clarify what type of messaging they need and um, how the flow of their website should be given what who they're targeting, right? So your website is obviously representing your brand, but your website is not for you. Your website is for your customer. And so what do you want your customers to do? Because they are online right now they are Googling services that, and products that you offer. You may come up and then three competitors come up and they're going to look at every single one and, the, and they don't like to read. They just skim. And so they need to see those main points of what you offer. And is it solving their problem? Because they're searching, they're shopping and everyone's shopping online now through websites, Instagram. Sure. But they're going to verify that on your website. So I like to say, for example, chiropractor, right? You go to, uh, you're searching for a chiropractor, three sites come up, and then two of them are just like really bad and really outdated. And you're like, okay, well, he's kind of close. This chiropractor is kind of close to where I live, but man, their website, it's like, I don't understand what I'm looking at. It's really complicated. It's really messy. And it's like old. I don't know if I want this person cracking my back. 
And then you go to another website, the third one, and you're like, it's clean, it's professional, it's, it answers the question I'm looking for because their services is right up front and they're telling us what they offer and that I trust them now. And then obviously I'm going to go with them. Sure, it's maybe 10 more miles out of my way, but you know, I trust them a little more. So you're, you know, you're going to make a call. That's how I like to explain it. Do you find <laughs> too that as business owners who are trying to do their own website, that sometimes it's hard for them to, because like you said, it's, it's about the consumer and them understanding. And sometimes people, I find that entrepreneurs, cause I, I struggled with this for a lot of years of they have a hard time explaining what they do. Either they make it like way too complicated. Um, I remember talking to a gentleman that literally talked to me for 10 minutes about what he did. And at the end of it, I was like, what do you do? So, <laughs> so hang on. And it was this huge explanation of like all of these things and where the trucks go. And I, and then at the end I was like, so like you empty septic tanks. And he was like, well, yeah. And then I was like, well, then just say that. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. And exactly. Because I didn't understand. Like, I mean, he installs them <laughs> and he like does all of this other stuff on them. But I was just like, that seemed really complicated for just, you have a shitty job. <laughs> that would, that would have striked more of a conversation, but do you find that happens a lot with entrepreneurs the, that they're like, sewage work. let us do the shitty job for you. Yeah. Like just to make it simple <sighs> because I was like, uh, yes. and I think, I think at the end of it is like, sometimes we, we get into that, um, because I think with this gentleman, he didn't want it to sound that simplistic. So of he course. was trying to make it sound more yeah, you're than overcompensating. Yeah. So do you yeah. find like a lot of business owners do that with their website? They're trying to overcompensate. Like I need to make myself sound important. But at the end of the day, people are like, what? <laughs> totally. I am so glad you brought, brought that up because first of all, I will admit that when I started up in a day, I did the same thing. One of the mistakes I made was like, you know, I got this. I'll write it. I'm a copywriter. I'm a designer. Da, da, da. And it was like, da, 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 da. we do this, we do that. Da, da, da. And, it, and then I had my business coach look at it. I had a, a marketing copywriter look at it. And they just like, were like, Ooh, took it down completely. And I just like put it in their hands. Uh, so yes. And it happens all the time. Um, we get, so we get a lot of people come to us with the bad websites that are is too jargony, not clear and concise. Like we do this, we provide this for these people because of X, Y, Z, and this is how we do it. So, um, so we have to clean it up a lot and they know that I always talk to them about their copy. I ask them if it's working for them, they typically say no. And then I say, well, we have copywriters that can help you. It costs between this and that. And they always say yes, because copy is everything like, yes, the design needs to be clean and great and, and have a, you know, the interface needs to work for the flow and, but it's really the messaging that really captures your audience and, um, having a clear call to action right by it. So they don't have to search around your site, look for looking, you know, for that. The other thing is, is like a lot of people come to us with a million pages and they really only need two. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Nobody likes to click around. I mean, we're all in mobile. What 75% I think is the, is, is the metric of people that shop or use their cell phones on websites, man, if you're trying to click around that little like toggle button, the hamburger on the top, and you're like, and you're like, I don't even know where to click. And you're like clicking around and then you have to scroll back up and try to figure out to, how to go to a, you know, another page. Like we don't do that. It, it shouldn't have to be like that anymore. Just simplify everything, get yeah. people, get people to trust you, the people you want and need for your business to make an action and then let it happen. Yeah. I love that. And I think, you know, even in doing the podcast, I mean, I got a lot of like speaker one sheets. <laughs> I got one the other day that I sent back to them because I was like, this is five pages. <laughs> <laughs> like we want was, you to know and I'm like so... I just I just what do you want to talk about <laughs> just, but I know I'm guilty of that too like that 
I, you know, I used to send these really like six, seven, eight page packages out when I would have a new client trying to explain everything. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I just realized like a lot of people, it would take them a long time to reply to me or respond to me. And I realized it, it was a lot for them to read because they knew they would see how many pages it was. And then now it's literally like two pages on the second page. It says, I could tell you all the stuff I do, but then why are you paying me? Nice. If you want to know more, then I can jump on a call with you. And then a I lot of people it. laugh at that. But the truth is that <laughs> they don't really care at the end of the day. And I had to like let that go because they don't care. They're just like, just tell me that you understand my problem and that you're going to solve it. I don't care how you do it. Like, right. Yes. That's you, our ideal client. Yeah. Don't give me like all of the details. Like if yeah. I say I want chocolate, don't tell me how you're going to make the chocolate. Just say, I hear you want chocolate. Here's chocolate. <laughs> we, we go through that a lot. Like, because we have our processes, like if somebody just were like, when we get cold emails, They'll be like, hi, so-and-so sent me to you and can you tell me about your process and how you work? And I'm like, I so, so badly just want to send you the website to read, but I can't do that because here's your website. You know, it's like, I don't want to be rude. So I have to like be as like short and concise on these emails as possible, but also like set expectations. Like it's, you know, this is exactly what you get and this is what we offer and this is how it works. Like you have to give us your assets before we build the website. We have to have everything. Then we have a kickoff call. Then we build the website and then we make all of the edits at the end of the day, right then and there. Now I'm going into our process, but yes, going back to what you're saying, like being like as concise as possible is like, it's difficult. It's difficult for people, especially like business owners when they don't have, they, there's like so much, they're so in their business. They're so in it that they, it's hard. It's difficult. I'm, I'm the same way. It's difficult to step away and just see it like in three words. Like yeah. we do ours is we take the headache out of getting your website up. And then that opens up the conversation. It's like with your sewer guy, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh, so you do sewish. Ah, tell me more. <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, it was interesting. I learned a lot of big words, but at the end of the day, I just thought it was funny. <laughs> ah, but then I was, but it was a good eye opener of going like, I always try to think, you know, when they say like an elevator speech, I always remember like my dad saying, think that you get into an elevator and you have one floor to tell somebody what you do yes. and make them understand it. So stop, stop throwing all of these big words in, like make it super simple. And then if they want to know more, they'll ask more. But he's like, because you can see people's eyes roll into the back of their head when you have this like very lengthy explanation. And at the end of the day, you just deal with sewage. <laughs> that poor guy. Uh, he's probably going to be like, that was me. <laughs> Cause I did tell him to go listen to the podcast. <laughs> It's okay, we love you. And now, and now he, he did change it because the rest of the night somebody else asked him, and he was like, "Well, to tell you the simple version, I have a really shitty job. I deal in septic." And I was like, "Yeah, isn't that interesting?" I mean, that's like it's it's comical. It's it's like alive, and you're like, "Oh my gosh, really?" Like, yeah. So I'm hoping he changes it because I thought that was really great because. He did say, like, then he was like, I'm totally going to use this because he's like, I have the best shitty job. And I was like, I <laughs> love it. That's awesome. Like, but again, I'm one that loves jingles and like a little stupid thing. <laughs> they, they stick with me. <laughs> you should do a little jingle for the beginning of your podcast show. I need to do something. Yeah. It, it's getting to that time where I need to like change it up. Um, oh, I love it. Which I, think which I, lo I love to do. So the one thing I want to ask though is, because I think this is a question that popped into my mind. So somebody's out there, they, they've got a website, whether they like they did it themselves really quickly or th but they're not happy with it. What are some of the things that they should know beforehand to sort of have prepared? Because obviously they, they don't just come to you, talk to you like in the morning and in the evening, the website is up. And I know some people might be like, you know, might be, go, oh, up in a day. Perfect. So this all happens in one day. Um, but what are some of the things that they should be thinking about before they sort of come to you? With a bad website? Yeah. Like if they just go, 
because I'm sure sometimes you get people that call you to go, I just don't like my website, but is there something that they should like that you would say, okay, if you don't like your website, here's some things to consider before you contact somebody. Oh, well, time, money, and effort. If they're, if they are planning on editing it themselves or building a new website themselves, that's going to take way too much time and time is money and a lot of effort on their part. Um, and then before they come to us, we have a series of questions that are very specific that we ask. And one of the, so they don't totally have to prepare. They just need to know that their website is going, their website is going to get rebuilt. And that existing website is gonna go bye-bye, um, which is good because you need a nice clean site for search. Um, and then the other thing is like, consider who, here's a good one. Consider who your website is for. Our primary question is, what do you want your website to do for your business? And remember that your website is not only about you. Again, it's about who you're speaking to the people you want to buy from you. So who are those people? Have them in the back of their mind, your mind, write them down. And then, and then, you know, then that come to the table with that. And also like, yes, our websites are built quickly, but just because you come to us doesn't mean like, okay, well, we have to build your website tomorrow. <laughs> Some people, <laughs> it's not like that. Um, it's, it's, yes, it's up in a day. Some, we had somebody come to us this morning. Oh my gosh. 730 phone call. Lindy, I saw you on LinkedIn, your post, and I have this new tech startup. I can't name the name. And we have this event next Thursday and we need a new website. Actually, the second time this happened two weeks in a row. So I'm a little tired. Um, but yeah, so they, Monday is our kickoff call and Tuesday is the build out. So it happens fast. So um, yeah, just being, you know, prepared for, you know, being able to get your website up within two days, because you're going to need to send us some of your additional assets and probably we'll clean up your copy. Uh, and then, or it can be two or three weeks. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter. Like we're super flexible. Like we give people time, especially new businesses to gather their assets. So we, we have a, like a sheet that helps them because that's daunting. That's time and effort right there. It's a pain in the, you know what, to do that. I wish I had a, a really easy turnkey solve for that except for the fact that I will literally sit with you on Zoom and go through your computer and tell you exactly what you need as courtesy, uh, just to kind of get the ball rolling because business owners, you know, it's easy to procrastinate that daunting stuff. Uh, but yeah, just like um, if you need time to gather your assets, we can book you in two weeks, three weeks. It's, it's we're super flexible that way. And I think that's, you know, that helps people, but I think it's important for them too, because sometimes you feel like, um, it's almost comforting to be like, we're going to send you a form to fill out. And you're like, great. Cause I don't want to have to come up with all of this stuff on my own. Like I'm really good at filling out forms. If you ask me a question, I can answer. I'm good at homework. <laughs> but if somebody <laughs> just comes to me and goes, tell me what you would like a website, <laughs> right? Like, right. It's, it's hard to sort of be able to, I mean, I can tell you what I don't like about my site, but if somebody were to come in and go, okay, so tell me the new stuff that you want. I would be like, I don't know, but this is what I don't like. Yes. And that's helpful for us because we can see, we can see an ugly beetle from the, from a mile away. So we know we're not going to use the same content or the same images, or if we use the same images, we're going to clean them up and make them look cool, more branded uh, as part of the package. But um, yeah, typically we'll, uh, through our series of questions, we get a better idea of exactly what they're looking for and what they actually need. And then we tell them what they need and either they can say, uh, I don't know, maybe, um, or, you know, or we tell them that they should really consider, you know, X, Y, Z before they come to us. I mean, it, it all depends, but the cool thing about what we offer is that like we, we're going to clean up your site and we're not going to charge extra unless you need like really like custom graphics, like new ones um, that even that's at a minimal cost, but we will make it, make what you have look so much better. And we're going to do it on our end. We're going to clean everything up. And it's like part of that package. 
except for like, I mean, unless they need like copywriting services, that's, you know, a different product right there because that's very specific. Yeah. So give all of the plugs then where people can find and learn more about it, because I know there's tons of people out there um, who are are like me that need to stop procrastinating and just go, okay, I don't like this website. So it's time to get one that I like. So where can they go to learn more about up in a day and then even to, to see if you guys would be a fit? Sure. Um, You can go to our website. Uh, It's upinaday.co. And then if you're unsure whether or not your website could use an upgrade, we just started a free website audits. And so it's upinaday.co slash review. And it's totally gratis. The cool thing about that is we will, uh, we have a series of questions that we ask you. It takes you five minutes to fill out. And then we will do a video audit, audit of your website showing you where and how to make um, improvements to your site to improve clicks and action. So that's a really cool thing to do. Um, but yeah, just go straight to our site. There's a big green button that says book a call with us and I'll jump on the phone with you. Thanks. <laughs> that's awesome. So if you, you know, are out there listening and you're kind of like, mm, I mean, I don't love my website, <laughs> but it's there. Then make sure that you head over to either our show notes or our blogs, get all of the links. And uh, we'll also have the links of where you can connect with Lindy if you just want to, you know, stalk her a little bit more because she's so awesome. (laughs) Oh, please do. Can't wait. I'll know where you come from. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Lindy, thanks so much for taking time to chat with us today. And I think, you know, there's, there's a lot to this for people because I think, you know, Website is something that, you know, we know that we all need, but it's a daunting task and it feels like, you know, like everybody says, like time is such a big thing. So why not let somebody else do it so that you can concentrate on the stuff that really matters is having the good website and then the people coming do it. That's right. Beautifully put. Thank you. (laughs) One of the first things that you're told in business is you need to have a website. But if you're like most businesses, you know that 97% of your visitors will just leave your website with ever reaching out to you. So how do you change that? And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have Lindy on the show today, because I think it's one of the things that is so important. It can, you know, I mean, you want your website to bring in leads and to boost sales, but to do that, you need to make sure that you have proven design, you have proper copywriting, you have UX techniques that can change what your website is doing right now. And it's okay to not know that stuff. But I also understand that for a lot of business owners, especially if you already spent a lot of money on a site that you're, you know, now doesn't work for you or never worked for you, that the idea of spending another 10,000 plus dollars just might not be in the budget or just isn't something that you're interested in doing. And so I think, you know, Lindy's idea of this up in a day is fantastic because it really helps you. So if you're not too sure how they can help your business, then I do suggest that you go to our website at foxtalksbusiness.ca, click on blogs on the left-hand side of your page, and we're going to have all of the links to be able to chat more with Lindy and her company, and also the link for you to get a website review. So it only takes about four minutes to fill out the form. And again, as she said, it's completely free. So you can actually have someone who's going to take a look at your website, who's going to let you know, you know, what's working, what's not working. And, um, they actually give you a free video, um, of them actually going through your site. So, you know, um, and it's so much easier when you can just pay someone else to do it. Let me tell you, it's very much money well spent. And it's something that I am on her website right now. So upinaday.co and I'm going to start filling out my form right away. So I hope you do too. And let's all have amazing websites and also head to our social media. And if you have a website that you love or you have a website that you're like, "Eh, I'm not too sure of, um, let us know, share your amazing websites and share some of the things that you learned because those are always fun too. And if you want to see a website that you don't like, head to mine because it's one I don't like, but one that I'm really excited to see what up in a day can do and change. So as always, no matter what you're doing today, whether you are pulling your hair out or whether you finally decided that it's time to invest in less stress and get someone else to do it for you, make sure that you take time to have fun. Because as I always say, if you're not having fun, why are you doing it?